in case you always wanted to know how photography works, this is how it works. It's just light that hits a flat surface. Hi everybody. In this video, I wanna show the difference between what my camera's viewfinder sees and what ends up on the roll of film. As you can see here, the 25 millimeter viewfinder that Voigtlander built to match their lens, well, it doesn't match. And what I ended up doing was cutting several strips of cloth tape and placing them over my viewfinder's glass, then going out and testing the results of the new frame lines inside my viewfinder because I don't wanna end up with any more shots where I cut the person's head off accidentally. So yeah, this is me out on the streets and I am showing what it looks like through the viewfinder. Basically, you can see that there's tape on the viewfinder at the top and the bottom. And I was just filming using my iPhone pressed up to the viewfinder to give somewhat of an idea of what it looks like now that the tape is on there. Of course, the angle of the camera on the iPhone contributes to the distortion that you're seeing. So it's not exactly 100% what the eye sees when it looks through the viewfinder, but can give you kind of an impression. And I really do take this long to compose a picture of a bush. But you can see there's so much missing on the sides of these pictures also. Here, I ran out of time to uh, snap the photograph and I thought it was more important than trying to keep my phone up to the viewfinder. So these pictures are just me going around with my camera. As a real pro. So yeah, here you can get an idea of exactly the difference between what the viewfinder sees and what the camera sees and what you would see if you were there, which is me in a mutza. And I pulled this roll of film and that's why a lot of these shots don't have much contrast and have a lot of different grays going on and are a little dark. Can it be? So yeah, here I was trying desperately to at least have my iPhone up to the viewfinder for one street photo shot. I kind of managed. I stayed at this location for ages and that's the best that I got. <laughs> I love this guy, it's pretty cool. beautiful Frankfurt. You can really see when the photo shows up how much is cropped on the left and the right. That's my bike. So yeah, that was me going out last Sunday. Yeah. And uh, taking some shots around the city. As you can see, it's completely dead. I mean, partially because of Corona. Also, the weather wasn't great at all. Um, here in Frankfurt, Corona has become obviously a much bigger problem over the last few weeks, and they've started to have uh, mandatory mask wearing on certain streets, and there aren't that many people out and about. So I took the opportunity to just take some pictures of trees in the forest, and um, 
a bit of nature shots, which I used to like to do a lot of, actually. I just like uh, having something that's standing still that you can move around with the camera and watch how it changes the forms and the shapes and try to line up something that looks interesting, even though I think taking pictures of trees and branches is one of the first things that everybody does when they first get a camera, especially if you're shooting black and white. But I like the challenge of trying to get something good all the same. Um, yeah, and I was definitely happier with the frame line adjustments that I made at the top and the bottom. There's definitely a lot on the side that's also still not ending up in the picture. And I probably will put some on the sides as well. Although it doesn't bother me that much. I feel like that's something I can imagine a lot easier than the top and the bottom. And it's something that's not quite as critical for whatever reason. So yeah, I'm not too worried about it now. I also do think it's interesting that the the lens distortion of the viewfinder seems way more pronounced than in the lens itself. And overall, I just think these are bad viewfinders. I don't know why Voigtlander made them this way. Um, they don't seem to really help you. And it's probably better if you just use your imagination and get to know the lens really well. And I think I might more often not even put it on the camera and just go out with the lens and the body and hold it up to my face and sort of imagine what I'm going to get. That'll probably be more reliable than looking through the viewfinder, which is really deceptive, as you can see. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about going out on the streets on a day when I normally wouldn't go out because like I said, I went out on a Sunday. The weather was bad. I knew there weren't going to be that many people around, but I found, especially with this question of trying to take pictures of people and show them in a more dignified way, that it was a bit easier when there weren't very many people around. There's something quieter about working that way. And I think everybody feels the same kind of loneliness when you're out on a day like that as opposed to when you're out on a day where there's tons of people walking around, it's just very hectic and everybody has this sense of competition with others and this sort of a carnival of sights that is competing for something that's gonna catch your eye and it can be a bit overwhelming. And I think you end up going with these flashy moments. Whereas if you go out on a quiet day, you don't have that going on and you're probably gonna find quiet moments, obviously. So I would really encourage you to go out on days when you normally wouldn't. And even on days where you think, why am I going out to take street photos, especially of people, there's not gonna be anyone out in the city. Just try your luck and see who you find. You might end up with some interesting characters and faces. I would recommend though that you don't do it on foot because if you walk around on a day like that, you're really gonna get exhausted. There's so much distance between point A and point B in which you're actually going to see a person or a different scenario. And I think it's better to go out on a bike or something more mobile than just your shoes. Yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to, like I said, do some more videos soon about cinematography. A uh, film that I worked on is going to be coming out this week on Friday. And after it's out, then I'm going to post some more sort of behind the scenes and more of my thoughts about shooting the film and working on something with actors and coverage especially. And also I've decided to set a challenge for myself this winter, which is to use a uh, four by four square format for the entire winter. So that means this will no longer be my daily camera. I'm gonna set it aside for a while and instead I thought it was close by, but <laughs> maybe it's farther away. Uh, let me go get it. Yeah, instead, this is going to be my daily camera. Um, I never had the dough to really pitch in and get a full Rolly Flex, so I have to admit I have a Rolly cord, but I still think it takes beautiful pictures. And um, I'm also going to invest in a system so that I can scan these negatives because currently I just have a 35 millimeter scanner. And going to 4x4 is something that I wanted to do for a long time. I'll hold the camera up so you guys can geek out. Um, but like I said, I never had a scanner and it's just 
a whole different ball game because you only get 12 pictures per roll. Um, you got to get used to this twin lens system. You got to get used to looking down and looking at ground glass and working that way. But I really want to um, challenge myself to do street photography with it. And one thing that I want to test is using it like a rangefinder camera so that instead of looking down in the lens, you can look through this uh, little system that they have set up where you have a tiny square in the back and a, another square in the front to do your composing that way. So I want to try to do zone focusing and... Um, see if I can get any sharp pictures doing that, which sounds crazy to, uh, to anybody that's ever used large format or medium format, but I want to give it a shot and see how it goes. I was inspired by Vivian Meyer, of course, who I revisited recently, and I'm just so impressed that she managed to do street photography with a camera like that. I also feel like in the wintertime, there are fewer days when I would want to go out and take pictures. And I think this will motivate me to actually get out there on days when it's cold or where the light's not so good and try something new. So that's my goal for the winter. I'll post some videos of the results and also post some videos on my Instagram. Check it out. I hope you guys are well. I hope that you're all healthy and that you're staying safe out on the streets. Um, I try to wear a mask as much as I can when I'm out on the streets. And of course, I'd recommend the same to you while you're looking for pictures of people not wearing masks um, because the human face is way more interesting when, you know, two thirds of it are not covered or one third. Anyway, um, stay safe. Take care. See you next time.